Hello there everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestria War, in which we're playing as Zerontia, and we're going to attempt to go harmonic, even though I'm not sure if we really can, but we'll see what we can do. We've got Legacy of the Storm, we've got the Desert Tribes, we've got the Great Confederacy, and Zan Trans Zebharan Caravans, which is an infantry commander, which is important, but the Great Anguilla. The story of Zerontia is the story of Mikuza Atakan. No zebra before her has managed to bring the Imazeb, Imazib tribes together like she did, and during a long life she's become a legend. Yet the Storm King's rampage and the loss of Tobuk shattered the hope of her twilight years being peaceful. Uh, Mikuza will have to decide how her people in Zerontia approaches the world, whether it is through trade and dealing or through violence and up loyalty. Oh boy. Be worried for when the sword is picked up, it cannot be easily put down. The old ways. Oh. The Angulid. Well, I guess after this one we do the Rath of Tobok. Tobok is the crown jewel of Zerantia, and the equestrian that now occupies it is a blight. The idea of backing powerful warlords is evident by the fate of those warriors who first rushed to dislodge them. It's already weakened in Imazi, but uh, are in no position to fight a war, and the pen must rule. The Angulid. Uh, town was like a water, flowing on endlessly, and as much as you grasp for it, it just floated on your hooves. Even if you achieved great things, time could sweep it away so easily, leaving you standing in the ashes of your successes. As all things were born, so all things must die, and Mikuza, Atagan, felt her age weigh down on her. Uh, two years ago, all had been up right in the world, and yet it had come crashing down. Was this a legacy she would leave her beloved daughter? A nation that had fled into the desert with its tail between its legs? A capital in the hooves of criminals and warlords, and a people who had lost her faith, or faith in her? Decades of work, undone in a hooffuls of months. Now she was back to where she started all those years ago, and now an older, more tired zebra. Your brooding mother, Umala's boys, came from behind Mikoiza as she came up to stand right by her mother's side. You know what? Uh, that you do not need to do this, right? You can retire now. And let me deal with Topok. Perhaps the time has come for a younger and more vigorous zebra to take charge. Then you can stay in Agzat and eat dates. Perhaps it would be a more fitting challenge for you. Girl, I will have you canned. Uh, Mikiza gave her daughter a freezing glare. I thought I would have peace when your father passed, but this barbed tongue has jumped in your mouth. No rest for the wicked mother, and then there's not a greater villain in Zarantia than you. Umalez, smile reached from ear to ear. So that's it. Where can I find a cane? Mikiza started looking around herself. She was certain she had seen some reeds she could use somewhere. Oh, well, mother, if you need support to walk, I can have one made for you. Umalez laughed as she fled her mother's wrath. I'm not dead yet, you insolent whelp. Okay, so at least we got some more stability. That's nice. McCoy's is power base, so. Reminded of the rats, choosing to hope. We've with the gunrunners versus threaten the gunrunners. Well, let's choose to hope. A question is given as promise, and unless rivers of blood are spilled, the city remains in a scrape either way. Trusting his word and remaining on as good terms as possible with him may what will be the best hope that we can Imazib have, the lost city. Menez Amas Dag, a trader from Tobuk, had arrived early that morning and he carried with him news from Tobuk. She said said news were enough to make the blood boil, yet Mikoiza sat calmly on her paw as Menes spoke of peace shooters' plans. And they say Equestria's land of friendship, she sighed, when Menes was dumb. There's no depth to which she won't sink. Not enough that he squats in her city, even as a tem temerity to try to negotiate. It seems that way, your majesty. He asked for one year, and he says that at the end of the year, the city will be given back to you, as he puts it. And though he's imprudent, I humbly request that the crown repays his diplomacy in kind. Tobuk, much like your tribes, was devastated by the Storm King, and though the ponies long for you to return, sparing them more violence is the right thing to do. A thief has crawled into your house and taken possession of it. Do you drive him out or sit outside your house to patiently wait for when he dies to leave? McCoy's responded, and Menes bowing his head in response. I simply fear the threat that threats. However, justified will only impact what little trade can still flow to the city. Whatever you choose, though, know that the ponies of Tobuk still long for your return. I think this one, yeah. Okay, and then uh, appeasing the Amzarud. Amzarmud. Amzarmud. Uh, the Amzarmud are Mikuiz's first fierce uh, servants, but their loyalty is tied to their honor. The choice to tell her the Tobakian intruders robs them of vengeance for a fallen kin, and they are making their voices heard. Welcome to the stability war sport overall, so either one is not good to lose. I'd rather lose war sport. Um, we're missing equipment production. Support equipment. Oh, that's not good. Uh, uh, I definitely want artillery as well. Choosing to hope. The City of Brooks. Agzat was never more than a gathering place for the tribes, yet with Mikoiza's ascension it became so much more. It has become a city in its own right, and foreign traders and interests are coming there, now, coming there now that Tobuk is not accessible. Though it is lesser than a lost capital, it serves us dutifully. Sword on the scale, the Imazib are warlike people, and the desert breeds are hardy people, but there are also traders and caravaneers who have earned a living crossing the Zebhara and carrying goods for whoever needs their services. Through 
So that our people in Zarante approach the world, whether through trade and dealing or through violence and loyalty. Be wary for the sword is picked up. It cannot be easily put down. The old ways. The not outside observer that Imazib are an eternal and unchanging fixture in the Zibhara. One stays true to the ways no matter how the wind blows, yet that stereotype lies a much more complex truth in Though some conform to this notion, just as many are fluid in their ways and more willing to adapt. Also, we are on ahistorical, just to let you know. Um, no matter what happens, I think we're probably going to have to grab uh, well, more manpower. Oh my god. And army XP? Yeah. From the Chaos Growth. As you reach the highlands of northern Zarantia, the desert slowly gets way to rolling grasslands, which in turn become hill crisscrossed by small brooks. The sands are as fertile as you will find anywhere in Zarantia, and the valleys are filled with olive groves, fields of sorghum and cavassa, and even vineyards. Cool winds blow in from the north, contesting the hot, dry Zapata, and give the region periods of refreshing cool. Here nested, on the slopes of a large ridge, lies the capital of Agzap. It's a modest place by international standards, with buildings cut out of mud bricks and rammed earth. The buildings are unlike the cities of the coast, built for defense as much as anything else, with many of them almost akin to small fortresses yet. It is also a place of rapid change, before the Storm King, Kothangian, and the Egyptian investors have both seen the potential in the city and industries have sprung up in the region. Foreigners are a more common sight than ever before as it escaped destruction has become one of the few places still fully intact and thus the best place to do business. The merchants and crafts ponies that fled Tobok and the shooters reign, have stood among the Zarantians as well, doing their part to helping the raise of the city. Though the last year has been hard on the Anguilid and on Zarantia for Agazat, they have been good. It's no Tobok, but it's a good home. Hey, got more factories. Nice. 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 Yeah, I guess we'll make some um, infantry equipment, military actions. Oh, I want that one, but at the same time, I, I just want a beeline for, uh, look at this, slave base economy. Nice. I do want this, but I, I want to just start beelining for this stuff. Because our divisions are really bad. They are 8 combat width, oh my god. And these guys, the Dune Raiders, are 10 combat width. And they're chargers, which is cool. But cool is not going to win us wars. The path of unity. For times, I do envy the rulers of other nations. Umalaz murmured as more tea was poured for other people might bicker and fight for dominance, but they are so part of the same nation. Being the Angulid of Zarantia seems to be more akin to hurting dragons. It is Mekuiza, responded flatly. Zarantia is not something written into the fabric of the lamb. It's an agreement between tribes, and if they feel that the deal is not honored, they'll no longer stick around. The question is what the remedy will be. Griffonia. The Griffin's Empire was brought together through forests, and all I read says that the Empire had no shortage of pride for their stubborn peoples. Then again, the Empire is a shadow of what it was, and their leader, Tra Frail. Indeed, and yet they at least they reached that far. There's more than you can say for many nations. Tribes like ours have worked together in Concord, but conquest is how kingdoms have been built. And yet aren't these kingdoms rocked by demand for democracy, Umalaz mused? A hoopful of dragons will defeat an army of sheep. It's true that a cow people follows more easily, but might not a nation of free zebras be even stronger? High faluting ideals are dangerous, my daughter. If things continue as they are, unity must be forced. But you're right, our people must come together on their own terms. A settling people. Nomadism is not in some inherent trait of the Imazi. But it is a way to eke out a living in these harsh lands. Many tribes, especially in the north, have settled for de centuries. Not decades, but centuries. Um, they built their towns and cities much like the Gothangians or the Egyptians, and they're no less Imazi than their wandering kin. Cool. We have a cup of coffee here to keep some nice more as well. We're referring the Amisi. Or Amsisi. Amsisi. Oh. Please. Nice. Um, who do we have here? More political power can't, the cannot be fired, the changing world. Why do we take Tobok, my daughter? My Koiza asked Umalaz before taking a sip of her tea. Not when or under what pretext, but why? Because this is a gateway to modernity. Holding Tobok. Uh, would let our people rise, become a kind of Kothik, or Mirjit. Yes, we would seize a modern city, leave our old ways behind, and become like the Kothik, Kothaginians, and with no trouble. That's why we failed, yes, failed. Our people are bound by a tradition's millennia in the making. The features like the Green Sea, fast, inviting, and we galloped out of the desert towards it when we took Tobok, but the sea can drown you. You can become lost, and it is no less deadly than the Zebhara. If we do not have ourselves, then what do we have? And losing our old ways to start playing at, at being Kothangians would make us, what, imposters? Dancing? To a foreign tune, not ours? Oh, my lads, uh, nodded as she noticed her mother's point, but at the same time, that unwillingness to change is what lost us Tobok. Was it my Koiza? asked pointedly, or was it a blind faith that progress would be inevitable and that my people had to lose themselves in order to be safe? Or, she smiled wryly, maybe that is just what simple fear is speaking. It's so easy to flee and refuse to give up anything, and then you've already lost. Clinging to what drags you down can drown you in even shallower seas. It's a difficult issue, but that's why we're here, my daughter. We must make sure that enemies won't lose themselves. Or make sure that they won't lose themselves. We serve as if the Imazib can change on their terms. We'll go with that one. Uh, reaffirming the Amsisi. 
The AMCC is a thread that binds the disparate tribes of the Amazigh together, whether they were like a mercantile, settler, or nomadic, progressive, or traditionalist. Oh. All um, Amazigh acknowledge it. As they should. Hmm. We definitely get them the conscription, because we're not even making any divisions. They can't do it, my god. A settling people. The Carthaginians are an amusing sort. Mikoyiza uh, said out of the blue. We've been their neighbors for untold centuries, and yet so many of them think we do not live in towns or villages at all. I recall as one player ride in Kothag who wrote a play where Imazib and Imazib, Mare, was withering away because she was trapped in the city. I had the misfortune to watch it. Um, <clears throat> Once when visiting, and I don't know if I was to collapse in laughter or retrieve a can cane and go find the playwright. It's so strange. Agazat lies close to the lands. Do they not know how many of us have been settled for centuries? I guess I consider these pro proper Imazib, those proper Imazib. In the mines, you must be nomadic to be a true Imazib, yet when you consider the opposition between the nomads and the settled, I suppose I can see where they get confused. How do you manage it? Um Umalaz asked her mother, how do you find a balance between the settled and the nomadic? I don't know, really. Makoiza said, their needs are not nah, completely opposed, and thus... Perfect balance is a precarious position. To favor none is to be able to trust none, and you need to find those who stand by you utterly. As for me, those nomads helped us claim Tobuk, and I have not forgotten. I stand by the cities and towns, but they are the way forward. Ooh, the Blue Sage. Tasa went Wigward is a zebra of singular wisdom and mercantile skill, having traveled across northern Zebra, zebra for decades. He's a stallion of a thousand stories and a million insights. His return from latest travel is eagerly waited not just by Mikiza, but all Imazib. This is a guy who wants to lead us. Every zebra's anguish, did it say? Ah, Agulid. When you meet with Mikiza Atagan, be careful. Wasif Talat, warn the young colt by his side. She's a dangerous mare, maybe even the most dangerous mare you will ever meet. I've heard the stories of her, but they all say that she fights her enemies, not her allies. Aren't we sworn to aid her? Would she be a threat to us? The young colt was strong and become a great warrior one day, but he was still ignorant of the games of chieftains and aguilids. A greater threat than most zebras you will meet, but not in battle. The Wasif smiled at the naive remark. She's a snake coiling herself around you, and before you know it, her venom has made her you content with being in her clutches, for how could you say no? I remember one gathering when she met with Zagwa Amasarmud. You must have, you would have thought they would be cold with each other, but Mikuizo met her with the warmth you gave a daughter. Inquire about Zagwa's niece and whether she had her full yet. Within a week, she was like a mother to all in the tribe. I understand, it's not a good thing, she's hospitable. She ingratiated herself with the uh, Amsad mood like she was everyone's mother, and before long they were so woven into her schemes that they could not pull away without ripping themselves apart now. They walk by her side, so integrated into the greater Aktagam that they are no longer a whole, but part of something else. That's why she's dangerous. She sees no Talat or as uh, Amsar Mudo or Atagan, all she sees is Imazib, and as long as she is Agulid, she will depend and care for them when, whether we like it or not. Slip up around her, and you too will be her ward. The Council of Tribes, rising up once more. The storm came caused untold suffering among the Imazib, and yet they did what they always had and adapted. The greedy Yeti chose to go after their wealthier cities instead of chasing them up and down the dunes. Though the dead can never come back, the material damage rot can be repaired. Mm, is this good for army XP? Who do we have here? A uh, well-known pony. Oh, we can't even do this one. We need to be harmonic for this one. That's a lot of stability, which is nice. That's not bad. Bookworm. Political power. Ooh. I don't know. I want more PP. But it looks like we can't get any more PP. God dang it. A thousand mile traveler. A sharp. Ooh. A spicy aroma of sacred ignat. Tea rose from the bowel between them, or bowl between them. And Mikuiza raised a bowl to offer the, to the wise sage that sat before her. With a girt. Tasselwent was a slight zebra, uh, though just how it was hard to see thanks to the Tasselwent's customary blue robe and veil that covered all but his speckled eyes, yet his age and wisdom shone through his obscuring clothes as he placed the books down before McCoy's and accepted the tea. My last work, such as it is, alas, I return before you defeated zebra. He bowed his head and before drinking, McCoy's, whose hoof had traveled over the first book's cover, raised an eyebrow. I count eight books, each of them sizable. Can there be so much in the art of alchemy that you still have not learned? For each and everything I learned, I realized there were ten things more to discover. Wibbergird aside as he gave the cup back. My last goal, I'm afraid, was a far too ambitious and one for a single zebra to master. The world is great, greater than we realize, and when we rise to challenge it, it reminds us of how small we are. You saw that a long time ago, did you not? That was why you have sought to unite our people and have elevated us to something different? Makoyza did not answer, only smiled wryly at him as she raised the cup to drink. Wibbergird bowed his head towards her. I am your humble servant, Agulid. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh! I was looking for political power, and we got him! Nice. We've known there. Dang it. 
Um, recovery rate, that's nice and all. I might just go straight for limited conscription, because we are lacking so much manpower, it's not funny. The Council of Tribes. Unlike the Carthaginian Senate or the Amer Egyptian Pharaoh, no Imazib leader rules without consent of the tribal leaders. McCoy has not forgotten us, and she has invited them all for a grand meeting to hear them and to affirm their, their oath to her. Simple classworks. If one would look at Zorantia. One would think almost that they haven't suffered from the ravages of the Storm King. After all, with its balanced desert and nomadic culture, what could they have suffered under the tyrant's suffocating grip? That was a disgustingly ignorant thought. The McCoys had seen first hoof that broke families. They destroyed towns and abandoned tents, the scorched lands of her people, and their despair gripped her heart. The horrors he had inflicted on her people were an unforgivable crime, and if she were any lesser, she would have fallen in deep despair or a maddened sense of revenge. Not to say she didn't desire revenge, but this revenge wouldn't come from blood and fire, but by picking up the pieces left from her home and reporting to something greater, a, a whole larger than the Storm King ever saw before he blighted them with his presence. As you can see, the rebuilding of Shirza is going apace, and it just shows her ledger after ledger, as well as reports as, at the pace of everything, a reconstruction should be done within the month. Not only reconstruction, improvement! She said to the like confusion of the assistant, Shirza didn't have schools left to teach his youth. As reservoirs were pitiful and did not even serve them as well as they could have, she continued, pushing herself to stand from her chair, gazing upon the window with a thoughtful, stern expression. They did not go or have modern plowshares to work from the, work the soil. I trust those means were, were all given to them now. They have, and we're seeing them supply, bought supplying the outlying villages. Good, thank you. And you can leave now. And as the assistant bowed and departed, Makoiza allowed herself an honest smile, her true revenge against the Storm King realized day by day. From the places, pieces of glass, a mosaic grander than what, we've, than what we were before. Awesome. Chief Ironbreaker, look at this. Oh, technology. No tribe is as martially inclined as Amsarmud, and no Amsarmud as able as Zakwa. On orders from Mekuza, she went to Kothag to gather all those Imazib who served there as mercenaries and to curry favor among her old clients. A much Imazib blood has been spilled for the Carthaginians. Hopefully they will, they will honor this. Wait, hold on. I'm going to breach a little infantry. What do you mean infantry? Should I not research that? Oh, we need artillery. Oh, God. The Gathering Tribe. Construction speed. Eh. Meh. The lands around Agazad are teeming with activity, as zebras from all over the are arriving to, arrive, to join the great meeting of tribes. Tens of thousands of zebras from hundreds of tribes are pouring into the city, each tribe a colorful parade of wealth and power. Yet, the mood is not tense, but hopeful. Full stand on the rooftops, raining down flower petals from the arriving tribals as music and songs fill the air, and the chieftains arrive at the Angulid's castle, they are welcomed by, like kin by her, food, drink, and even the singular kip of a cup of Ignat tea waited them, with no expenses spared. Some came ready for arguments, straining against the Angulid's overreach, but they found themselves embraced and led to a sumptuous feast before they could say much else. Others who had hoped to converse in private with the Agulid to carry favor were gently but firmly kept among their peers, outside the castle. The Z tribe zebras who came with the chieftains are treated to feasts well. Every household and every family that Atagan have opened their homes and tents, and from the highest to the lowest, all in the Agzat hosts are tonight. What a gathering! trans saharan trade. Storm King's rampage left the trans saharan trade devastated in its shadow of what it once was. It'll take, you years, take it years for it to grow back if not helped along. By Makuza's word and efforts, the caravan shall be restored greater than ever before. We are really missing a lot of guns. Um, reinforcements. Mm, pony power is not looking good. That's something we can fix right now. But no one there. We've got no one there. Um, is there anything here? Oh, there's literally nothing here. So we might as well do pony power. Which I'm sure is not going to be very good anyways, but still. Um, you might go mass assault for more manpower, but we'll see. Uh, can we even do anything here? Oh, we, we have to wait, so... Return to the Ironbreaker. Zalba remembered the day she left her home with a head full of thoughts, a rifle on her back, and a motley group of friends and warriors she could trust. Gazing upon the humble village she had called home before she headed towards unknown grounds. Yep. Yeah. Uh, years had passed. Uh, friends had been lost and gained, and enough scars were cast on her body to make her look like a battleground map, but her youthful rage had been tempered with cold, calculating insight. Alongside her, uh, as she looked backwards, marched the Ironbreaker warriors, her battle brothers and sisters from a home and abroad. Many of those she left would with would never return home, their belongings as sometimes ashes being carried in a simple wagon to the families that even after all these years waited either for a return or on closure. Alongside these fallen brothers, however, were countless faces new and to, to these lands, people that had extended a hoof in friendship to win the world at all but cast them down. The Ironbreaker warriors were not the same group that left this village that day. Ponies and even griffins walked in her ranks. Bonds forged in the fires of war with each other, each one carrying their particular wisdom and experience on each other no motions. As she approached the city of Agazat, the banners of the Agulwid flew high above it, and she could see the small groups waiting her. A small speck of red among those waiting was unmistakable. Even after all these years, and she smiled to herself. She was coming home, and she did so triumphantly. Welcome home, daughter of the desert. Ooh. 
We have a field marshal. Nice. Oh, another division. Ah, oh, it's what they come with. With artillery and maintenance. Interesting. Very nice. Assuaging uh, the Azir tribes. The Azir tribes are a breed of their own, and the Emazim know well that if you wish to traverse these, their lands, you will respect them. Gifts of peace will help overlook their tra our trespasses, and uh, <clears throat> extra precautions among the caravans will lower their risk of incident. Um, we could probably do improved working conditions. I really don't. Eh, go and do this one, anyways, just because uh, it'll come back later on. I'll route through the Great Desert. Much of the tribe's wealth was built not in warfare, but in trade for centuries. The Zebhara have been the fastest route to cross a continent, but there are so few. We've been able to braze a sweltering place. The Imazib are among those who have the strength, the skill, and the willpower to conquer this desolate region, and from Mergib to Kothag. Merchants have eagerly hired their services to help them speed along their way. In the wake of the Storm King's rampage, the caravans that once struck these dangerous routes have all but disappeared. Yet the flow of and desire for commerce has not abated, and there are those who long for the routes to open again. Tobuk might currently be lost to us, but our services are still desired across Zebrica, and, and we are still here to provide. Once more to the great emptiness and muster guards. Zebhera is a place of a thousand perils, from raiders to monsters, and the Zebras who take on duties of caravans must be up to the task. Those who buy our services pay well for protection, and we will not let them down. Honestly, I might just get rid of this. As much as I like it. I might go superior firepower. Oh, actually, is there one that gives you, like, weekly manpower? Oh, man, that'd be nice. Or not weekly, but, like, gives you 500 manpower. Which one was that? Oh, crap. I don't remember. Because that would really help out. Was it a grand battle plan? It might be. I know it's not superior firepower. I don't remember. A Grand Caravan. From like Zeb will cut a path down to Cam Camelcand, bypassing the Quagatai lands and reaching the southeast in record time. This caravan is more than just a trading expedition. It's an affirmation that the Imazib are still able and willing to master the Zebhara. Oh, God, I don't remember. More stability? The power base. Ooh. Well, it's not like we can really build too much here anyway, so. Our desert. For centuries, the Emozi. And not only survived, but even thrived in lands that others find too harsh. Part of the key has been to never simply accept the desert for what it is. It can become more, and whether it is take years or decades, the Emozi are patient. Hmm. I might go Grand Battle Plan. Because we're going to need some serious defense against uh, the Cherub Terra. Returning from the desert, through the Zephara, down past the Quag Atai, into the Camel Can, and beyond the caravan has made its way. At several points, it appears caused worry, even fear, as there were those who thought the approaching caravan was an invasion, thankfully. Our guards could smooth things over, and our merchants could deal in their goods along the route. The lands we traveled are still dealing with the aftermath of the Storm King's invasions, and are still devastated towards towns and villages we saw make it all too clear. They'll take months if not years to restore them, yet life goes on and there's still a need for trade. Maybe the goods needed are more practical than they used to be, but the buyers are no less interested. And as long as there's a need for trade, those caravans will be traveling. We know those ends and reap the benefits. The restoration of the trade routes has increased our weekly equipment gain. Nice. A hundred tribes. McCoy's greatest ambition uh, achievement is, and will always be, the fact that she created a measure of truly true unity among her people. Even after recent events, this unity is weakened, but not broken, and it'll be enough to ensure that when she is gone, her daughter is accepted by them. Oh. 80% chance of receiving a random amount of weapons. That includes support equipment and artillery, too. Network expands. 20% we get nothing running into troubles. Oh, uh, that's not good. There's no guarantee we'll get anything here. Um, mutual pact defense between Zrantia and Tobok. Strike on the savages. If, to, if we win this war, Shrub Terras will be entirely handed over to Tobuk. Zarantia will reap the spoils of the war through lootings. That is, if Tobuk's leadership doesn't have the plans for Shrub Terra. Oh. The desert flowing. Well, we could try it. We'll try it once. Then our merchants. The desert flowering. The peoples of the coast believe that we love the desert. <clears throat> we don't. We enjoy the desert, but we do not love it. There's nothing in the desert, and no zebra needs nothing. We love the rivers that briefly throw through our flu... Uh, through our lands in the winter. We love the times when the rain brings a desert alive with countless flowers and plants, and we love the fields that bring plentiful harvests of sweet fruits and filling rains. We love the second ignet flowers of the mighty azurum that leaves in its wakes, and we tend every little patch we find like it's our children. 
other people that live so long along their verdant coastlines, where the soil provides all that they could dream of, that when they see us eking out a living in the Zipara, they presume it must be a matter of desire rather than necessity. As we carve the wadis and the dried river beds into canals and reservoirs, treasuring every do drop we're given, we remember Tobuk, that city between the rivers. There, the coastline was ours, and the ponies we liberated from their Warzenzin, uh, Warzenin oppressors were our friends. We traded, we feasted together, found love with each other, and worked together to build a future together. Tobuk must be lost to us, but at least for now, as we wait to regain that city, we wait and carve the desert to give what little we can, or it can. We've not forgotten you, pony friends, and then new year, new hope. The fall of Tobuk was Zorantia's dark sour, but as always, we weathered the storm, dusted ourselves off, and rose once more. We shall return to Tobuk once more, and we should continue to build our future. Because at that point, what else can you do? Hey, over 80% stability, though. It's a stable nation. That's all I'm asking for. Stability. Uh, and to win the war. Eventually. A new millennium's confederation. Do you remember your oaths? The representatives of the tribes looked at Maquisa, puzzled for a moment. Of course they remember the oath. Of course we do, our queen. Do you doubt our commitment to them? Grumblings uh, start to come from the elder and the tribal representatives, one that the queen might simply let happen. No one dare accuse her after all, and yet they argued. As they argued, it was clear amongst them that the different interpretations of the oath, veterans and newly picked representatives of the tribes argued amongst themselves on what they meant, and soon a dawning realization came to them, probably to buy a single question. Maquisa raised a single hoof, silencing the commotion before she spoke again. I do not doubt the commitment of the tribes to their promise, but how long has it been since those oaths were carved in words and paper? How many were here so long ago when they were made? I do not ask for a test of faith, but a renewal of those promises, an oath made for a new age. She just uh, just calculates gesticulates a hoof over the leaders, a careful lead smile on her expression. Look at her land, our people, how they suffer, and yet how they grow. Even the loss of Tobuk, the people of Zorantia rebuild themselves into something new, and a new Zorantia requires a renewed confederation and a renewed vow, and one that serves a new Zorantia we live upon. The meeting would go without a hitch, and the oaths and vows are renewed, and if one or other tradios happen between the like-minded tribe leaders, well, that was just part, that was a plus after all, wasn't it? Times change, bonds of kinship don't. Nice. We're looking pretty good. Pretty decent, I would say. Oh, we have the new field marshal, too, right? Zagwa Amsarmud. Oh, hello. Tobok honors a deal. Oh! To the Algolid of Azrantia, Makoiza Atagan. The year's up, and as promised, have your city back. I've endeavored to keep it in decent enough condition, and though I can't vouch for my associates, I thank you for the civility in the past year and wish you luck in your future endeavors. As a side note, your gift is much appreciated and will come in handy. Be shooter. Good luck and good riddance. Ex add extreme to bucking corruption. Oh, God. Add warlord remnants. Oh god. Dealing with the warlords. Oh boy. Peace shooter's gone, and slugs and enforcers are still covering the countryside like so much mold. They resent the loss of their meal ticket and will not depart suddenly. We must decide how to deal with them. Well, okay. Well, we're gonna need a new uh, army leader here. Do we have cores on any of this stuff? Train and still have no manpower, pretty normal. I might go defensive, we'll see. Um, oh god, go local autonomy. Um, they just need infantry, that's fine. Oh, good lord, the network expands or if it's through a build. Um, our trading network has been born fruit and has secured connections among a wide variety of local merchants and companies. Not only have we secured a connection of what. Uh, uh, small delivery weapons, we've also built up a network of future contacts to strengthen the system even more in the future. Nice! So we're for bandits. Uh, fighting across the whole book. Oh my god. One by one. Wash clean in blood. It's not bad. Gently with cornered animals. Just get out. Yeah, this is probably the one we want. Peace shooter honored his deal and departed peacefully. <coughs> and many lives. Oh, we'll get this one too. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, we're spared for. Do we think the warlords are determined to fight to the bitter end for honor's sake? Of course not. So we can likely coax some of them to leave as well. And spare the losses that crushing them would entail. Law and order. Yeah. The first duty of any leader is to provide security. And the warlords are not the only criminals found in, uh, in Tobuk. Armed criminals. Many of them have been acting brazenly against the tribes and villages, believing themselves beyond the riches of the law. This must be rectified now. I want to do this one first, just because you get more compliance. Compliance is very important, especially in the early stages, because you don't want resistance to go too high. So. That's my reasoning, at least. You make more guns. These are, this isn't even core territory, which sucks. All right. Dealing with the warlords. Speech shooter is only part of the pack. They infested Tobuk. And his hired muscles still around. The question is, how should we deal with them? 
Zug was prepared to plan to ice and crush the warlords one by one. Between the Ironbreakers and the loyal tribes, we crushed them and let their deaths be a lesson to whoever else would attempt to challenge or grasp on the city again, after all that has been. The time for the Emozid to show their abilities warriors has come and they will not be found wanting. This is especially important as the warlords possess minor weapons and tactics, and defeating them will let, them, let us learn how to deal with these types of enemies when they aren't disorganized mercenaries. Wilbergert, meanwhile, has proposed to simply buy them out. Provide them a way out and provisions to smooth things over and we'll see them leave without more death. After all, Peace Shooter made good on his promises and it is the nature of the mercenary to avoid conflict since you can't spend your gold if you're dead. We're rising from recent embarrassments without having to lost hundreds or thousands of our brave warriors. Let's keep that in. Focus our efforts on rebuilding Tobuk. War will come later, sooner or later, and let us not seek it when it is not needed. Whatever we do, we must handle them quickly. Lay down weapons. It is a frustrating and drawn-out dance to get them to leave, much like uh, handling a scared, angry animal, but opening up corridors to the border of the ports to them is having its effects. As long as we don't do anything surprising, they will depart. Yesterday's en enemy. A curious situation has emerged. It seems like one of the warlords, an exile from her distant homeland in the north, is tired of running. She's planted her forces firmly in the southwest and sent a message to the Al Aguilid, or offer fealty in return for her home. Uh-oh. Oh, that's not good. Sadly, our efforts to expand our trade network have failed. The merchants that we have spoke with were not interested in rebuilding the network, claiming that they had found other venues for transportation. We're good enough for centuries, why not now? How dare you. How much are we missing? 2,000? That's not terrible. That's interesting that we actually got it, though. Combines are not bad, just get out. I ain't gonna complain, don't get me wrong, General. Walnut Drive said as he looked at the crates of food that had been just put uh, down between him and the very angry zebra that stared him down, but just so we don't talk past each other, could you repeat all that from the top to bottom? By the order of the Aguilid, you have a month's grace to make yourself scarce, uh, uh, Zalga grunted him, and well not idly wondered if this was what it was like to stare down a dragon. Buzz off to whatever hole you crawled out of, uh, crawled out of and never touch Zorantia's lands again. Pretty sure that's the best deal we could get, though from one soldier to another, professional courtesy, if that's your thing. Let's just take a moment here. My soldiers and I ain't much for talk or diplomacy, but we can make something work if we give it a chance. He fired off his most endearing smile, only to have the zebra's eyes drill a hole in him. Do not test me, you rat-born cheer-up tear and pile of puke. Turn back your pack of vermin around and march. If one single farm burns or one single pony's harmed during the retreat, the deal's off and will hunt you down and gut you like fish. Do I make myself clear or do I need to carve it in your face? Alright, I hear you. No problem. We're as good to go. Thanks for putting up with us. Not even he was going to push his luck anymore. Boy, he was glad to have to deal with her on the battlefield. Start marching and don't stop. This is going to hurt us. Escorting the warlords out. Oh, Good lord. The pacification. Zorantia's oath. Uh, to Tobuk, included providing safety for the people. After the Storm King and thanks to the Peace Shooter, we failed in this promise for a while. Now, however, orders restored and the lands of Tobuk are again safe. So then, what after that? Take more stability, though, at least. Oh, I want. Oh, he actually lose political power and consumer goods, huh? That's not good. Hey, look at that army speed though. Pretty decent for that, at the very least. Nice. A zebra. A desert fox. Who needed political power? Let's get more guns though, that's good. We're actually positive, finally. Um, I guess we'll just go right here, maybe? I don't know, we'll see. Nice. Sir Vianna's a proud daughter. The pony stood in immaculately straight lines, all of them at attention, and before them stood General Alessia Sniznaya, of with one hood thrusting on the sword that was planted before her. The stand had been going on for a week, but she kept her forces in line. Neither hide nor hair of any of the locals had been touched, and that was what made Zakuya, uh, Mekuiza, agree to meet with her. Before the lines of soldiers, she seemed small, but only she smirked. Uh, she only smirked as she studied their commander. Look at that. Nice. Many of you. Many of my people say that I am meek for letting you slip instead of burying you all, she said as she walked towards Alicia. Still in the mayor's face, am I, girl? And if I'm not, what makes you think you're in a position to make demands of me? I've seen enough of the Imizib to know that they don't follow a leader when they don't respect, and everything I've heard about you tells me why they respect you. Alicia stood firm and met McQuizia's gaze without wavering. That's why I, I know you'll listen. McQuizia raised an eyebrow, coming to a stop as she stood right in front of Alicia. Alessia, and leaned in to indicate that she should continue. I'm here because my prowess in the field of battle is my only way to gain the resources required to reclaim my homeland and command and is the only thing where I am truly capable. My previous employer deceived my soldiers and I, and you, as you are no doubt aware. Returning home now would leave us with nothing, which is why I wish to offer my services to Zarantia. We're unaffiliated with any local or regional politics, and our loyalty will be to you 
uh, as long as we continue to command with honor and retain our pay. As our actions in recent months have shown, we are disciplined. If you need to test us, put us into battle wherever you need. All I ask is that we are allowed to continue operating here to our own ends, and that when the time comes, we are released to our from our contract. If you accept this, we shall return surrender to you. And if I don't, McCoy's ass still smirking, well, then we shall stand our ground and die well. Alicia didn't hesitate, and McCoy said chuckled. Good. That's what she wanted to hear. I accept your terms, General Alicia. Nice. Good, because we need a general. Winter Specialist. Well, that's the wrong place to be a Winter Specialist, but whatever. So, now what? A hybrid warrior. Uh, Zerante's armies be will become a bulwark, able to plant itself and bear whatever the enemy throws at it, and break them with overwhelming firepower. Never again shall be sent scurrying to the desert when foes approach. City regained. High to- Oh, corruption. Oh god, we are corrupt. Can be core by Zerante using integration occupation focus law if a compliance is occupied- of occupied states reaches 40%. That's pretty good. City of Wonders in gold. Ooh, that's not bad too. Ooh, I wanna, where are we at? Compliance. Oh, uh, we probably wanna race for that then. Let's see to regain. It's been too long, but finally the great city of Tobuk has been returned to us. The scheming smugglers are trying to, be, to possess some modicum of integrity, and under their promises, we now return homes to rebuild and to greet our old friends. Summoning the elites. I see, the cities are short of Zerante in control. We must summon the old power brokers and figureheads before the Agulid. They're still welcome under her rule, and Mikoyza will meet with them to hear the council and request aid. Cool. Yeah, I still get one every day. That's not bad, even though this, this hurts just a lot. I want to core as fast as possible. I'm sure that's pretty good. Which, uh, I mean, this is that's good for like militia and stuff, infantry. Hmm. I really don't want to remove this because you can equip. Get a lot of that. We have a decent amount of support but I do want engineers on our guys too. But research just takes forever. But returning home. <laughs> the book streets were not like she remembered them, not quite. The Storm King's ravages and a year under the thieves had left it a shadow of its former self. There were still buildings that had been repaired on the streets that had piles of garbage in the corners. Yeah, the ponies of the city were out in said streets, and Makoiza strode along Tobuk streets with her daughter by her side. They cheered and stomped their hooves in celebration. Makoiza wished she could join their glee, yet her smile was strained, and she fought this moment of relief poisoned by the sting of wounded pride. The mighty Agulid of Zerante, returning to her city, was not as a liberator, but first when a common smuggler and criminal allowed her to do so. She felt weak, impotent, and the unwelcome sensation laid itself like a mourning veil over everything. We should clean up the city, and when, it, we, and when it is put back in condition, we should celebrate again. Well, my Les's murmur made Mikoyza glance at her. Her daughter's smile was wide, and her eyes sparkled with joy. Even she murmured almost imperceptibly to her. Let's draw on the memory of this whole awful episode in celebration and joy. Things are finally back to what they should be, isn't, and, and isn't that what we wanted? Mikoyza lowered her head slightly, feeling how her smile turned less forced. Indeed we should, my dear daughter. Indeed we should. And Basile sell Thradat at your service. One of Peachwater's accomplices, a griffin from the distant Braunfeld, I remained behind when his colleague ran off. It appears that he has realized there are a few places for his kind of run. He has offered his services to the Aguilin in exchange for safety. Like most smart people. I really want to use this division template. Nice. I mean, we obviously need more guns, but still. I'm not sure how much maintenance companies will really do if we try to capture more equipment here. Honestly, I'm just going to throw you over here too. Just in case. Maybe we need them, maybe we don't. We're going to need probably some guys to like, send on the ports too. But the Tobakian chieftains. Tobak under Zarantio was not had never been a city with one ruler, but v rather the various power brokers and influential community figures in it were given a place on the city's council. The city, much like the tribes of the desert, had largely been allowed to mind its own affairs, at least until now. Don't give me that look, Rose Rain. Mikoiza told the mayor across the table from her before looking at the rest of the gathered Tobuckians. Speak plainly. In fact, all of you speak plainly. I'm too old to have you do the Tobuckian half-step of implications and hints around me. Then, please, noble Agolid, it was Menes Amza Amasdag who spoke up. You returned from exile, and your first move is to clamp down on the freedoms the cities enjoyed. It's basically, where were you last year? Rose Rain butted in. We were left occupied by criminals, and those meant to protect us were off in the deserts. So I understand why we do. She waited to gather ponies, but how do you explain that to the rest of the city? That a tribe divided against each other will not stand. McCoy just told her, you're right, last year was disgraceful, and I failed. Zerantia failed. The very purpose of this nation snapped like a dry twig. What we've been able to do thus far didn't work, and that's why we're going to have to clamp down. The Storm King is gone, but Kolthegs, what do we call that entire mess over there? 
The Chirupterans are up to something as well, and the entire region is scrambling to adapt after the last years. Uh, we can't go back to what was, because we saw what that led to. Things needed to change if we were to survive, and that's why you are here. I call upon your services, as I did before, to make sure that the Zerantia we dreamed of comes true. Can I count on you? Dancing in the streets. Above all else, the union between Tobuk and the Emaziba is one of mutual respect and honor. And we view the city folk not simply as subjects, but as honored friends and integral part of Zerantia. Recent events have shaken them, however, and we need to remind them of the esteem we hold them in. Biffle friend. That's not, ah, that's pretty good, but we don't really need it immediately. The political power is nice, but still. And reminding them of the law would be good next. So this one, dancing in the streets, and then reminding them of the law. Good at Millie, more stability, which you don't need, more political power, better consumer goods, but a better political advisor cost. All very delightful things. Beautiful. And three days left. Um, let's not send out an emergency yet. A most useful griffin. I understand that's customary. Uh, to bow deeply before you, most honored princess of Zerantia, though beast Griffin wheezed a bit as he addressed Umalaz, I can only hope that you can overlook my failure in this regard. I am very old, and my back is not what it used to be. A small smile crept over his face. I am also very fat, and most likely would fall over if I tried. <coughs> I am uh, not so unreasonable to throw you out for that, Umalaz said a small, be small smile, at the Griffin's self-depreciating humor. Between that and his ashamed appearance, his face lowered in a hat and claw, you got an awkward, almost pitiable uh, uh, figure. Yet, you did work with Pichuter, and my mother has little patience for his cronies. I almost certainly understand the, that, and in my position, I would be treating myself with utmost care, yet I am but a humble merchant, and I value my life above any notions of honor. That is for the better creatures than me. I also humbly would say that it is why you might be interested in my services. I won't deny that my former colleagues left the city in a bit of a mess. Yet, he has somewhere to go, and I do not. I will serve you simply because if I don't, I am a dead griff no matter what I do. Umal is not trust him, not really, but he did have a point. If there was a snake in the house, it was no better to know where it, to, better to know where it was. But more unlike her mother, she didn't feel like killing anyone just in case. Who knew, maybe? You would prove useful. I'm sure you prove, prove yourself, Mr. Tradat. Reminding them of the law, though. The Dobakians are traitors at heart, and they've always strived towards new and better deals. Sometimes this is at the expense of the law, and though we accept it, we do not let it get out of hoof. Fair warning will be given, but they have always known we treat the law seriously, and they can't have expected that to change. Two, 225, oh my god. Political power, stability, consumer goods, advisor can't be fired once hired. Severe to bucking corruption. Oh my god. Damage garrison goes way down though, which is really nice. Inspirational leader, that's not bad. Book water, mate. Political actions. Hmm. Ah, screw it. Do, do it anyways. I'm sure we could use more guns later on anyways. Dancing in the streets, my friends. Ah, the old broad Felden bird. Look autonomy. Nice. Ah, <sighs> Vasil said half buried beneath, behind the papers when Umalas entered, and as he looked up from the documents he was working with, somewhat. Wild eyed, he blinked and quickly, quickly rose up. Prince, he began only to knock over a stack and send them crashing into the floor. Oh dear, he grimaced as they scattered all over the floor. I'm terribly sorry, please forgive me. I've not slept too much recently. He bent down and did his best to pick up the papers. Umalez chose to simply bend down to help him pick them up instead of making a fuss. What keeps you from sleeping? Have you been sick? She asked him as he, she put half of the fallen papers back on his desk. No, I'm just making the utmost of the opportunity he offered, Vasilis said as he slid his own stack under Umalez's. I admittedly may have worked a bit later last night than I should have. Has there been any issues with my work? No, not at all. Umalez wondered just how late he had worked. Rather, a cart was delivered to the palace this morning, containing gold that was stolen when Storm King ransacked the city. You would not know of any of it? Yes, and my apologies that I did not counsel you on the matter. I had my ear to the ground recently. While your mother's putting the squeeze on the city's underworld, I am making sure to catch any bit, bits of interest that spurts out, so to speak. An awkward moment passed between them before he covered his eyes with a groan, and that was a terrible way to put it, and I am so sorry. Umalez, meanwhile, had to hide the smile that came over her face. I will overlook it, however, I do make sure that you rest properly. You won't be able to convince my mother of your usefulness if you exhaust yourself. Thank you very much, Princess. I will make sure to rest properly and to not make a fool out of myself going ahead. He bowed, and Umalez returned the gesture with a nod before leaving the room. As she did, she couldn't help but be impressed. He seemed more sincere than she had initially thought. Maybe there's hope for him yet. Ooh, critical population, consumer goods, stability, and construction speed. Wow. Our faithful friends, though. There are those in the city who never forgot a toll book's debt to the Zerantians, and who are ready and willing to aid us if it should come to war. 
These brave souls that deserve to be recognized for their honor. Friendship is a valuable commodity, and we know its price. We'll go there and then reestablish dominance. Every neighbor. Ooh. The migration. Ooh, that's not bad. City of Opportunity is okay. Rifle Capital is not bad either. That's not bad. I like to get through a lot of this stuff, though. All right, discipline. Ooh, more organization. Ah, network expands. Great! I got a unit artillery, too! Big guns. New leaders get good stuff. Holding the line. Oh, more defense. Interesting. Small. Ooh, plain stuff. Nice. Small fleet composed of two light cruisers and three destroyers, huh? Reestablishing dominance. The city's under control, but the outlying areas which have been neglected for over a uh, year. So go about life in their own way. They need to be made aware of the change in leadership, and they and that we may well come to ask them to do their part soon. Nice. Great Confederacy. Well, let's, let's take a look see again. Oh, actually, we get infantry and support them every week. Nice. Yeah, it hurts us pretty badly. I'll do these two next. It is a bit of a little swallow, but there are things we can learn from P. Shooter and his efforts. No, not all he did came out of brute force, and he managed to balance several factions quite well. Learning from him might feel distasteful, but there's value in it all the same. Terror in the countryside, attacks by monstrous beasts are nothing unusual in the countryside, and hardy commoners have no choice but to get used to it. Usually, monsters are driven off or killed as soon as they are seen, and sometimes they manage to injure even kill a person or two, but worryingly, news is arrived in the capital something much worse. Word is spread of a terrifying monster preying on lone individuals, mothers, and even the young. It attacks, kills, and feeds on flesh before disappearing into the night. There have been an alarmingly high number of such attacks reported in the small area. Locals are mortified in their attempts to find the beast have been put in vain. Uh, as casualties are mounting, they have now petitioned the government for aid. The story of the beast is becoming popular, and many citizens now look to us, expecting us to help the victims. While well, this originated as a local issue, it has now gained attention across the country. If we do nothing, the populace will be disappointed. We'll do what we can to help. Gonna go to merchants. I want. Nice. How much does this cost now? 225 still. City of Wonders and Gold. Tobuk is as, as she always has been, and our, she has always been a wonder city. Outsiders will preen and say, well, our city is greater, but they can eat sand. To us, Tobok is a shining jewel on the wealth and industrial might she offers us as the greatest prize. I guess something changed. Why am I getting these two? This is pretty good. The beast eludes us. Oh, look. Nice. As for the petition for aid, we decided to hire the finest monster hunters in the land to go and slay the foul beast. However, in the earlier report, the hunters say that they have failed to find the beast, as it leaves no tracks behind. Attacks on vulnerable individuals have continued in, and some are locking themselves inside their homes and refusing to even go outside. Speculation has been arrived across the country about the beast. Some say it is a chimera, an Ophiotaurus, or a Manticora, while others claim it might be a bugbear, a rock, or even a fearsome dragon. If the beast can fly, it would explain the lack of tracks. Intellectuals claim that it is merely a hungry wolf, nothing more. The monster. Uh, hunters are requesting more aid, and they are proposing a large-scale throw sweep of the area by hundreds of armed persons. It would be an expensive operation, and some of the government are reminding us of the sunk cost fallacy, and say we should just give up, though this would greatly harm our reputation. That's how we do it here. Very nice. Oh, we have people here now. Okay. Just research speed. Um, loose political power. That's interesting. Better production cost, though. 5% more soft attack. Uh, light tanks. Probably don't need any light tanks for now. Infantry would be good, but we don't really need to do that yet. Oh, we go to subs. Huh. We could go that immediately, and would that push us up higher? Hmm. Not quite back to normal. I don't know. Well, let's read this as we figure it out. Hibiscus was overjoyed that the Imazib were back in town. Not only did they keep things in order, but they were also way more well-mannered than those brutish mercenaries. If there was any people she really wanted to have piling into her little cafe to buy tea or coffee, it was them. Your tea is fine as always, Madame Hibiscus, one of the zebras commented as he had and a dozen of, her, dozen of his, she thought it was basically an extended family, sat around a table meant for eight. How have you not caught yourself a husband yet with tea like this? Oh, you know, my candidate has not been able to come here during the last year, but I'm working on it. 
Her coy answer made the zebras all ooh and ah and understanding, and hibiscus decided now, that now, if anything, if any time, she had asked a question, I had been gnawing in the back of her mind also. What has happened to the Aguilid? All these new laws and taxes, a lot of ponies worry. This isn't the Mikuzel we remember. The mood around the table would drop like a rock, and the zebras looked down at their tea. Well, then, at least that proved that they weren't alone in the issues. Oh, this does help it. Nice! Those are the matters of Aguilid and Chieftains, one of the zebras sighed after a second, and Hibiscus. But a sting of irritation. Why did they have to be so deferential? Couldn't they see that this was r wasn't right? She gave up a frustrated little noise, but pushed the anger down. It wouldn't do any good to snap at them, I know. The zebra suddenly perked up. It's Yuftin you've been waiting for, isn't it? He asked, leaning in to see Hibiscus' reaction. Hibiscus just rolled her eyes. Never you mind. What, Halva? Halva, isn't it like crackers and stuff like that? City of Wonders and Gold. Tobuk is always, as it always has been. Well, yeah, I read the one. The beast is slain. As we sent a sizable number of soldiers to help the monster hunters, the area was searched thoroughly and any possible hiding places of the beast were torn down. As the area was surrounded, the beast could not escape on land and such as were positioned to guard the uh, skies days and night, preventing it from flying away. As the operation was nearing its conclusion, the beast was finally found and slain, or well, as a group of beasts. Hunters had identified them as Pukwujis, small, colorful, and spike creatures with large fanged mouths resembling porcupines in appearance. Their size explains the lack of tracks and a large number explains the number of attacks. According to the soldiers, all such beasts in the area have been exterminated, and the locals should be safe. The public is pleased, yet also disappointed. The beast seems far more threatening when it was an unknown danger. When it was revealed to be a small pack, pack of small hungry Pukwujis, some even expressed sympathy for them, thinking that they were simply trying to survive and that they could have been captured easily instead of being killed. Well, it's over. Cleaning up the mess. Oh. Hopefully. Um, well, pea shooter. Left the city in the right state. Having been more interested in plundering the Storm King's arsenal than keeping the city in order, we're now left with an entire year of economic development wiped from the books. We are, in essence, starting from scratch. Uh, there you go. Do we still have corruption? We do. How do we get rid of corruption? Well, we'll do this one next anyways, but still. Oh, that's right there. Duh. Well, modern confederacy would be nice. Build, 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 build. Yeah, actually 13 divisions. That's nice. Doesn't mean they're any good, but still. Um, I don't know why, because we get better stuff here anyways. A curious holiday. Good evening day to you, Vasil Gude Umalaz, as she came into the room. She gave him a confused look, and he quickly moved to explain. And Broadfell, the river Evi, has always been important, enough that we pray to the goddess of the river. Today is e Evi's day. Were I home, I would celebrate with my family in a huge feast. Did I, I did manage to find some pain de orzo. Would you care for some? He asked, holding up the plate of small square places of what looked like cake. Thank you, Umalaz. Reached out and helped herself to it. It was more akin to a bread than a cake, but it was smooth and fluffy, and she nodded approvingly. That is very nice, thank you. Is it made from rice? I recall reading that Broadfell grows rice. Rice for days, Vasile chuckled. It is in everything, and we can't even boil rice about someone who knows nothing. That and fish from the Evie is most of what we eat, though I and I just know my dear grandmother would cane me for the oh, can me cane me for saying this, but I must say I prefer the fish of the Green Bay, but sorry, I'm getting lost in nostalgia. What did it require of me? He sat up a bit straighter, and Uma let us raise a hoop to stop him. Actually, let's leave that for now. I'll send for tea and you can tell me more about Broadfeld. Uh, if we were to trust you, it would be good for us to know that you were better, also. It seems such a shame that you have to celebrate Evie's day alone. I couldn't possibly ask that of you, Princess. I am more than honored, but I have worked to maintain my people's traditions even in this new age. If you have remained here, and you will be one of my people then. So please teach me your people's tradition. She pushed him up a little, having long since figured out he kept his guard up. If we were to open up, she'd have to push him. Uh, Vasil on the other hand bowed his head and smiled more generally than ever before. It would be my honor. Ah, that's not be worth doing too. For now. And we'll clean up the mess too. Oh, uh, beast is slain again. Oh, out of the pug, puck, pook, which, which were exterminated, the monster hunters and the soldiers all left the area, and the locals returned to their normal, routine lives, or so they thought. Only a few days later, after the sweeping organization, or operation, the beast attacks continued like before. The commons were terrified, yet knew that the government was unlikely to help a second time, and that the public didn't care for them about now that the danger had been officially declared to be over, so they decided to deal with the beasts themselves, acquiring weapons and making sure no one was ever alone in the wild. Eventually, one group of them was attacked when it was dark, but they were carrying a torch. It was turned to the beast, which burst into flames and perished. The charred remains of the creature were presented to the local governor, who then showed it to a cryptozoologist. They identified the beast as a rogue timber wolf, a wolf-like creature made of twigs, logs, and branches. They are rare outside of the ever-free forest, but have been spotted elsewhere in the world on occasion. Due to the lightweight body, they leave no tracks. After the incident, the beast attacks ended for good, and the area returned to peace and tranquility. Kind of awkward. Taking stock, huh? Oh, we want to take a lot of political power for that one. A city? 
Low poverty with mild poverty. Modern agriculture. Slave raid. Received word from the units on the Chipteran border that their legionnaires have begun a lightning raid, descending with ruthless uh, precision upon the border patrols and making a beeline for sparsely defended civilian settlements. Within an hour, they could reach a settlement and kidnap our citizens. We can scramble our forces to attempt to hold them off, or we can withdraw if we think we cannot defeat them. Oh boy. Um. Oh crud, do I have to make a decision now? I think it's... Let me see the one for... I don't know, let's just save it anyways real quick. I like saving a lot, as you can tell. So, City of Wonder and Gold, we've got all sorts of things we can do here. Uh, we'll do a hybrid warrior eventually, too. It is the Imazib way to adapt to our surroundings, when, with a plethora of painful lessons we've gotten in recent years. The town's come to adapt to more than ever before. The traditional warrior must die, and it's by something new. The unity of two worlds must be born. New ways of warfare. The menagerie of bandits, slugs, and mercenaries, and infested Tobuk might have been a plague, but it was a capable one. They would not have held out against attempts to dislodge them if they hadn't been. It's just well that we accept this fact and then study them, study what they did to see what we can learn from it. Um, it help you immediately so much. Modern agriculture? Yeah, that'd probably be good. We get mild poverty too. Not even the farmers' field is safe from the march of progress, and with strange new machines, fertilizers, and countless new innovations making the fields more fertile than ever, famine will truly be a thing of history going ahead. Um, so that's good to do. Oh, we need this one too. Schools and clinics. All of this change and development is pointless if it does not benefit the entirety of our people, especially the children. Those are for whom we build this new world after all. And they need new teachers to find their place in the world as well as doctors to save them from disease or injury. But we're going to leave that here for now. If you enjoyed the video, go leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do with Zarantia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.